Listen to this podcast right now! Do you want to hear a fucking podcast about anything and everything? Yeah. Like movies, oh my music, God. television, and more? Oh my God. Well, you've come to the right place. Yes. Subscribe to Journey Into Comics Network, and you get Podcastrophy, oh hosted God. by me, yes. Dick. Why not throw a couple bucks to the Patreon? It's your yes. choice. Yeah. This is a Podcastrophy. That sounds so awesome. The following, following. the following is a journey into comics. Journey into comics. It's a journey into comics. It's a journey into comics. Journey into comics. Journey into comics. Network. 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 Production. Production. Mmm. This is a tasty burger. You ever tried shawarma? There's a shawarma joint about two blocks from here. I don't know what it is, but I want to try it. Do you want some uh, coffee, Mr. Tully? Do I? Yes, have some. Yes, have some. Butter a carb? We elves try to stick to the four main food groups. Candy, candy canes, candy corns, and syrup. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice candy. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Foodies Watching Movies. It's Season 3, Episode 12. I'm your host, Nate. Today joining me, welcome back to Foodies, Miss Veronica. How's it going? It's good. How you doing? <laughs> doing okay. I'm a little tired, but I'm happy to be here. I'm amped up to be here. I'm jacked to do Foodies again. We took a break last week. We did, yeah. Our last episode. We kind of took a break. We sort of invaded that episode a little bit to... Incepticast. To boss man it up, but... Uh, you know, we didn't do that alone. Sarah, also joining us to the fold today. How are you doing? Uh, I'm here. Welcome to the fracas, as Nick Maxson would say. <laughs> oh my God. What? I'm not sure what fracas is, but he says that every time someone enters the Bruise with Dudes live feed, <laughs> welcome to the fracas. So I'm welcoming you to our fracas. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Do you want me to say fracas welcome. again? <laughs> I, uh, I, I, this is so unexpected. <laughs> Just Sorry, right out of the gate, you. I've thrown you off the, off the path. Uh, so we've got a lot of stuff to talk about today, guys. Where do you guys even want to start? I'm it's not... been a while. We've, we've had a lot of food and movie adventures in the past couple of weeks or so. Almost too many. Yeah, we, we did a lot of stuff. We watched a lot of things. We ate a lot of stuff. What was the first thing you wanted to talk about tonight? What we were cooking? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if you want to talk about what we cooked, what we recently watched. I mean, there's the Oscars happened. I've got that I can pull up and talk about. I mean, there's there, literally whether we choose your own adventure. Do you want to go get a dice and we'll roll for it? Like, I'm into no, that. No, how about we just talk about the movie we watched or like the movies we've been watching? Okay, sure. Since Where it's do you all start? like fresh and whatnot. Okay. Well, you've got the rundown. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> well, I well I didn't know if you wanted to start with your. Um, you guys had actually seen a movie that I didn't watch, mm-hmm. and I didn't know if you wanted to kick things off with some high energy, or if you want to talk about. Uh, you know what? Let's actually get into this documentary stuff because I want to kick things off with something really interesting and get yeah, into go some for it. crazy talking. So. Uh, A few weeks ago, like actually a couple months ago, I started seeing trailers on CNN when I was watching the news uh, for Three Identical Strangers. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And like Mm -hmm. the commercial, the the teaser for it seemed interesting. And it just Mm -hmm. like left me with more questions than answers. And then so when it finally was available to watch through Hulu, which you can, if you have your Hulu service, go watch it. Mm -hmm. I encourage you to do so. I do as well. Uh getting that out of the way now yeah absolutely you uh you know i jumped on it i was like oh my god i have to watch this movie so i put it on and minutes not even minutes i was hooked i was sold this movie had me yeah this movie was super fast paced like it just was one thing after another keeping you watching i did not want to stop watching it I wanted there to be, like, seven more hours of that movie, you know? Well, yeah, but, like, I was watching it before I had to go to work uh, one day, and I had to turn it off, like, halfway through. Oh. So I was right at, like, uh, the juiciest part where I was like, but wait, there's more to this story. And I was like, God damn it, I gotta go to work. 
So I finally got to finish the whole thing today. And it was such an interesting movie. Yeah. It leaves you, you said it best, but wait, there's more. That's like the whole episode yeah. or the whole movie. It was like one super interesting, seemingly coincidental thing after another unraveling into something unbelievable. I think by the Weird. name I think by the name of the movie we can kind of give away what the premise of it, the movie is the brief synopsis is as it sounds three people who are identical to each other who've never met before meeting for the first time at the age of 19 and the crazy things that happen the uh insane mystery that unravels of what really happened to them and why mm -hmm. and yeah this was a stellar documentary i would highly recommend watching it it was very cool i mean it was such a it was it's got some pretty sad elements to it because it it's so much deeper than what i thought it was going to be when you were first telling me about it you know i thought it was like oh a, a, these brothers are reuniting after 19 years of having never been met before, like, and they're mm -hmm. going to be able to live their life and happily ever after the end. That would be great. Let's leave it at that. I think be done even, with it. I think you even said that. You're like, okay, the movie's over now. Woo. Yeah, they were like, it was like, you know, we were a good 20 minutes into this movie before shit started getting sinister. So I was just like, okay, this is a great spot to end it. And they <laughs> lived happily ever after the end. And I turned it off and went to work. Yeah. <laughs> and then I watched the rest of it. Which draws you in. Whew, it was a doozy. It was a doozy. I don't think I want to spoil it. I want people to watch this movie. No, you absolutely have to watch it for yourself to see how it all ends and what the real twists are. What the Yeah, how it unravels. It was a good mystery. It was a good documentary. Well done. Mm. Yeah, great it. job CNN. Like, shout out to them. CNN Films put that mm. out. They also did the Gilda one we want to watch. Yeah, we still have to watch that Love Gilda documentary yeah. on Hulu. That's on the list. It's on the list. And Bad Reputation, the Joan Jett documentary Finish I want to watch. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I just watched a really good documentary. Um, I think it's on Netflix called Tiny Shoulders. And it's uh, about Barbie. Barbie doll. Oh, yeah. It was really good. I really liked it. I was a, a Barbie girl growing up, you know, in the mm -hmm. late 80s, early 90s. Barbie was my fucking jam. Yeah. I loved it. So it was really interesting watching a documentary and seeing, like, the dolls that I had growing up and the dolls that my mom had mm -hmm. had and whatnot. And it was all about their rebranding, like, rethinking Barbie and how they uh, redid it. Like, in, I think it was 2016, they launched a new line of Barbie dolls that was like an all-inclusive line with curvier dolls and taller dolls mm -hmm. and petite dolls to represent more women and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And this was a documentary about the people behind that whole idea and concept and execution of it and the PR that goes behind it and like the stress. And it was such an interesting documentary and it was oddly empowering and feminist, you know, it was, mm -hmm. you know, and it had a lot of angry women on there talking about how Barbie is like the Antichrist, but... <laughs> Then they got, okay. they were shown the dolls at the end, and even like the most, like, you know, uh, angriest l l lady was like, okay, yeah, this is a step in the right direction. All right, all right. Mm. It, was a, it was a good documentary. Feel good one, guys. I like toy documentaries, and that sounds I like it'd be right up my alley. So I want to definitely check that out. I will say, not to correct you, and I'm not sure if you also watched it on Netflix, Hulu has it as well. Oh, okay. Uh, Tiny Shoulders, Rethinking Barbie. It did come out last year. I feel year. like I watched it on Netflix, but maybe it was on Hulu. I don't it know. It might be on both. Sometimes they are on both. I mean, that's that's a real thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I just remembered a documentary that I wanted to brief on, and this is totally springing this on you guys. It's not on the rundown, but I just we're here right now. So I put a documentary on after I watched Three Identical Strangers because it was like a, you may also like mm -hmm. this. And I was like, okay, sure. So... Sarah, I think you went and played piano. You were like, I'm not having any part of this one. but Probably. Uh, it <laughs> was better. called Tickled. <laughs> and it was about... Oh, ew, yeah. Hold on, just hold on. Don't get <laughs> ooing. Let me set oh. it all up before you start swaying wait. the listener. So, Tickled... Be swayed, listener. ...is about... <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you that it's way deeper than what even this basic plot summary says. What's it called? Tickled? Tickled. And okay. it's about... Competitive tickling. Oh my god! Allegedly, what? that's it. What's that? Okay, hold you on. Tell. So, hmm. in like the 2012-ish times or something, I, I, they, I'm pretty bad at the exact <laughs> time frame. 
they uh, there was like a thing that went out that said if you're a specific body type, a specific age, if you meet these certain requirements, you could get a fifteen hundred dollar paid trip or like all expenses paid trip plus fifteen hundred dollars spending cash once you're there to be a part of this competitive competitive tickling competition. So a bunch of dudes all get in on Sounds it. Sounds like a human trafficking Hold on. Like, like right? scheme. Hold on cuz it's a but wait there's more story. Ooh, I like those. So and I and <laughs> I, I want to watch I like it where so, this is going, so I'm not going to I'm not going to give away too much but essentially this guy from New Zealand wants to just like learn about this league. So he inquires and they <laughs> like had sniffed there's him out. There's a league out. of ticklers? Hold on. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Thank you. So Ooh, uh, this New Zealander reaches out to them and they like respond to him with really anti-homosexual insults, like of the hardest severity. Like they just like trash him because he's a gay man. Mm. And he's like, whoa, this just makes me want to figure out what the fuck is going on even more. Like, let's go. And he goes down this path and there's this allegedly this like Jane Foster. That's not the name, but that's the one that comes to mind group. That's like putting on this alleged tickling competition. He interviews people who are part of it. He interviews people who do this as a fetish. And then like the mystery deepens. And there's like this like one dude who I'm not going to tell you the, the full details. But this, there's one specific. Tickling, huh? But there's one specific individual who's at the heart of it. And his real end game is because it's a it's a non-sexual turn on thing. He's been making like ass tons of money out of. It's crazy. It is the cr- I we definitely need to watch it. It's crazy, like Weird. conspiracy. What the fuck? Tickling, really? <laughs> like that's yeah. exactly what you're gonna say. Like what? The word is uncomfortable. Did you say Ew. tickling? Like one more time for the people in the back. Tickling. Yeah. What? Would you want to be in a like if we, if you were a professional athlete and you were taking this like competitive tickling thing super seriously? Would you want to be in a competition who with someone who's only doing it for like a sexual fetish purpose? Knowing that that's what they're getting out of it. Well, here's the thing: the people, I wouldn't it's, want to. It's I'd be weird, like, Ugh. Man. the people who that's were weird, invo- man. the people who were involved in the league had no idea what the purpose was for, and then the people who are involved in the league. Oh no, to, I'm just here to tickle people. You're not even ready for this. The people who were involved <laughs> in the league that spoke professional, out, professional. The people in the league who spoke out were exploited, and those videos were put up and like used as like a slander campaign against these individuals who are up-and-coming actors or up-and-coming MMA fighters or things For of this For tickling? Nature. Yeah. <laughs> Allegedly. Exactly. Okay, it's... I need to know what the hell you're talking about. I'm going to need to watch this documentary, and I'll report back to you. Okay, good. Let's That'll be... We'll get into that. I watched enough to know that I didn't want to watch the rest. <laughs> you left at the least best time, though, because, like, five minutes later, the real shoe dropped, and I was like, oh, shit. This is But wait, there's it's more It's tickling What? It's <laughs> fucking tickling And it's also Very uncomfortable In a lot of different moments Because they show You don't want to watch Grown people tickle They do show yeah, people they, like, Get tickled hold people oh, down it, Like they're tied down <laughs> They tie oh down And it's down. all dudes And they like, thought they, That there would be Dudes and ladies them, basically. It's all men Yeah 100% men Oh my god. There will god. be like three I to can't four to wait to watch This documentary Three to five <laughs> like, men On top of another man <laughs> I'll, I'll report back. But it's not it's not gay. <laughs> I'll report back. I mean, worry. I want it to be, but <laughs> they said it's not. <laughs> so well, I'll that's why back. you left way too early. Is, is all I'm saying. Because <gasps> there's, there's more. more. There was so much more. Like great, I can't wait. Well, I had a date. I needed. That was to the do tip things. of the feather, as it were. See what I'm saying? Tip of the feather. Tip. Of the feather. But I'm um, okay, killing it. Uh, killing it, Nate. <laughs> let's get out of. Uh, some movies for a minute. Let's get into a little bit of food talk here for just a brief second, you guys. I've tried cooking a new cuisine. Well, so why don't you guys grab me some sort of a beverage out of the fridge, something cold? Sure. Uh, I forgot to do that before the show, and I'm just realizing I'm parched. Uh, but anyways, I decided, you know, our favorite Thai restaurant closed down, <laughs> and I was really quite disturbed and a little bit heartbroken that the exotic Thai in Highland closed down forever we've so we've talked about this a lot on this show we have talked about it a lot and yeah. grieved but you know what grieving turned into it was like a fucking superhero origin story is i i'm a dude okay anyways mm-hmm. uh bruce with dudes but uh to me i was like fuck it like i'm gonna try to cook this red curry that i used to get at exotic thai i'm gonna take the palate that i know what i tasted 
I'm going to take a couple of recipes that I see and think of the things that I would do to make that palette and then go from there. It fucking worked. When Nate was telling me this mm-hmm. story the other day about how oh. he made red curry, he's like, I'm about to change your life. Like, you're about to be so excited by this news. And he told me about he made Thai food. And I was like, this in no way affects me at all. I fucking hate curry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what I, are you doing? But I told her to continue on before you dogpile and chastise me. Sarah, <laughs> I was just being mean. But uh, I thought it was funny. <laughs> the reason I said it would change your life is because I jumped into the realm of not being afraid to try new cuisine, which means I will attempt to cook Pad Thai, Pad CU. He did say that was next. Any, yeah, anything. I, want I don't the give a fuck. Sen. I want the Pad Done. Seiyu. Done. I want some motherfucking crab rangoon, even though that's not technically Thai. I'm not cooking that. No. I want it. I mean, I guess I could cook it, but I don't know if I'd cook it. I, I think can you make should, it. I think you should be in charge of the crab rangoon. I can make it really, really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We just bought that cream cheese. And get we some, did. Like, crab meat. It's whipped. So let me break down this, yeah. uh, what I did with the Thai food real quick, because I do know mm. exactly how I made this. There's not, like, a Go for m- it. random mystery thing. So obviously, you got to get the red curry paste. I used three tablespoons of red curry paste, one can of coconut milk, like the Thai Essentials coconut milk. I just did like a dab of olive oil that just keeps it from sticking to the bottom and keeps it moving in the cooking process when you're simmering. Mm -hmm. Uh, Once those things were added, I added some garlic, actual pressed garlic, Mm. sea salt, pepper, uh, garlic uh, salt, you know, things of that nature, Uh, a little bit of nutmeg, and then I added onion, green pepper to the actual boil so they cooked in with it and then I sauteed chicken strips cut them up threw them in there and let it saute into that and then put that over rice boom you did it fucking home run it was so <laughs> oh and lime I forgot that I also did a mm. big ass uh, whole lime spritzed all the way into the thing like fully juiced that lime into nice. the thing yeah it was good you did it and I didn't get sick the next morning, so I felt pretty all right. Like, I didn't die. <laughs> great. You did it. You know, so. I want homemade Thai food anytime. Okay. That sounds great. Well, let's get into it. I'm all about that life. Yeah, yeah. I want, thai. I want that Thai life. You make delicious food this day. What did I make today? Steak tacos, girl. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We did have those little street tacos today. Mm. Sarah and I were at the store the other yeah. day and found these amazing little tiny taco shells, like flour tortillas. Mm-hmm. Uh, street taco style flour tortillas and mm-hmm. they were really good they're like the size of the palm of my hand they're perfect yeah i had two of them and that was like perfectly enough food mm-hmm. so while you were rocking making that steak and getting all that stuff prepared and the shells and everything mm-hmm. i went into make guacamole mode mm-hmm. and then i was like you know what we have this food podcast and people sometimes need visual representation when they're hearing something i mean i'm like that i'd rather see it than hear it or you know you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I took photographs of the rundown of how to make the guacamole. We're going to put that in the description or something. We'll find a way to utilize all that information. But uh, pretty easy. Avocados. Cut them. Get them peeled from their thing. Throw them in a bowl. <laughs> fucking mash them. Cut your tomato. Throw that in there. Rustic. Keep them chunky. Take your <laughs> onion. Slice them shits up little. Throw them in. Don't use the whole thing. They only use like a third of it. You don't need too much onion. That's too much. Then you want a, a whole entire lime. Again, shh, lime that shit all in there. Zesty. Whoop. And then what you want to do is salt. Shh, 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 a fuck ton of salt. You don't be afraid to use the salt. You know, whip it around with your spoon. And then you have amazing guacamole. Goes with chips. Goes with your tacos. Mm-hmm. Home run. It would have gone really good on some toast as it well. It would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Nate doesn't like that. No, we've discovered that Nate does not like avocado toast, and that no. is kind of my fault because I burnt it. <laughs> I fucked it up. Yeah. I'm not a fucking hipster is what it actually mm. is. Let's be real. Well, I made it before, and Sarah can attest to it because she ate it, that it was yeah. fucking perfect, delicious, and beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was uh, just like uh, eggs in basket toast with avocado and some cheese and salt and pepper on top. Beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I did not have the right pan to cook it in when I made it for you. And uh, the steam didn't cook the egg because the lid, there's t- it, was, it was a big fucking disaster. So it burnt and it sucked and you didn't like it. Mm-hmm. And I ruined avocado toast for Nate. 
<laughs> you didn't ruin it for me. I just am not going to ever be a fan of avocado toast, first of all. <laughs> Except I'm just going to say the same thing. For, it, first of know. all, I don't really like <laughs> eggs like that at all. They weren't supposed to be like that at all. The well, steam yeah. was supposed to cook them to a beautiful, hard, like over medium style. They were pretty over medium for no, me. No, they I were sunny side up. Yeah. Oh, but then that's what happened. They were sunny side up because the lid was letting steam out because it wasn't even a fucking lid. I had to use a sheet pan because mm. I didn't have a big enough lid for this pan that I used because I'm dumb and didn't use the right pan. So it's all my fault. But anyway, so mm. I flipped the egg and then it like turned it into that diner style egg. <laughs> And it was not what we wanted at all. This was yeah. just my the, bad. This was just the avocado toast situation. It happens. Yeah, it happens. My bad. <laughs> well, on to better things. What else did we mm. eat that was delicious? You Anything? guys had that cheese tray. Cheese. Ooh. More cheese. Sometimes you just got to spend a fuck ton of money on cheese. Are y'all telepathic, mm. by the way? Did you telepathically predict that she would want that cheese? Did that really happen? Is that a yep. story we can talk about? I don't know. <laughs> That's. I only told you that because... You know, it's just crazy to me that that shit happens. It's weird. It really is. Kismet. Yes. Well, what happened was is we were picking out cheeses, and yeah. I've been feeling like super. I made those steak tacos. I was cooking in mm-hmm. the kitchen, and I just felt like I wanted to watch Golden Girls or Jeopardy. Like, yeah, like have an old grandma's house day. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I mean, we're at the grocery store looking at cheeses, and it's like, God damn, I really want that port wine cheese. And uh, I told Sarah, I was like, do you like port wine cheese? I totally want it with Ritz crackers. And she, like, looked at me and got all pale. And she's like, I was literally just thinking that I want that so bad, mm-hmm. but you probably wouldn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> usually when I like things, she thinks it's yucky. But no, I was Not like, usually, but, you know, like. Yeah. I just wanted to have port wine cheese today. And I did. And it was magnificent. Yeah, really? It was it's, good. It's it was such good. a did weird like it? cheese. Yeah. It, it yeah. tastes, you know what it tastes like to me? Mm. It just tastes like easy cheese that's spreadable. Mm-hmm. Kind of. It's like fancy easy cheese. It's fancy easy yeah. cheese, yeah. I like yeah. it when it's like in a cheese ball. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It just seems a little bit more creamier than... Like this kind seemed just a little bit more harder and artificial than yeah, like, I'm used if it to was that like a, stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I loved it. Yeah. I liked it. That's what I wanted. That's why I bought it. Yeah, it's the best one. We never buy it though because it's like, you know... Five dollars for like a small tub of it. A small. It's like jar. what you get when you do the fucking fundraiser for kids' schools when they're selling the cheese and the sausages. I love that <gasps> stuff. That just reminded me. Last fall, the neighbor kids uh, were doing their fundraiser, and I bought like twenty dollars uh, worth of cookie and dough, and they never gave it, it to me. Those mother. And I paid them in cash. Those little shitheads. I'm gonna tell their mom. Mm. You should do it. Totally. <laughs> coming for you little shitheads but you'll do it in a clever way where you'll be like excuse me miss patty wackle i don't know why that's her name <laughs> well i've never met that this neighbor awkward. so i'm gonna be like you know those kids that you were taking <clears throat> around the neighborhood to you know sell cookie dough they never gave me my fucking cookie dough right oh i thought you were gonna be like i was just curious when that cookie dough was supposed to come in i've just been waiting and i feel like it's been forever yeah but I don't know them, so I'm going to be like, where's my fucking cookie dough? Fair point. <laughs> right. I gave you my money. I had to work two hours to earn that money. Right. <laughs> give your cookie shake dough. Shake. Give them the shit. That's two down. hours of my time. I will never get back for my fucking cookie dough. Where right. is it? You got the buckets. We never got the buckets. Yeah. I ordered the good stuff, man, with the M&Ms and everything. Oh. Bitches. Man. Coming for you, neighbor. I was looking forward to eating that. I know. Like, I was super stoked about it. Straight out of the bucket, too. Whatever. <laughs> Man, speaking about I'm serious cookies we need to talk hold about on we're cookies, not there yet right? because the cheese tray you guys forgot like you didn't just oh. get the port wine cheese what the fuck you also got that garlic oh, shit. yeah what did we do with that garlic shit the garlic stuff was spreadable brie with herbs oh my i didn't know yeah really that's what that was yeah it was so good it's called creme de brie yeah it's the, i didn't I think know it's, i'm not cultured yeah well, that's what it was. <laughs> we decided that we needed to put it on some lemon burrata uh, ravioli. Yeah, fuck yeah. Sauce. Target had some lemon yeah. stuffed burrata and like what, spinach? It was, 
Yeah, it was like a really, it was a smooth, like, ricotta filling. But it was it a had smooth the ricotta. lemon zest oh, in it. Oh, my God. It was so good. Yeah. So it wasn't just, like, lemony. It had, like, that lemony oil kind of thing, the zest thing going zest. on. Zest. It was lemon zest. It was very and good. And I really liked it with the the creme de brie, <coughs> garlic brie spread on yeah, top. Yeah, that's what we were doing. Because it like, the most perfect alfredo yeah if we had melted it in our little warmer or whatever Mm -hmm. we could have spread it like poured it on like it was a fettuccine alfredo you know what i'm saying we could have made it like into a cheese sauce yeah cheese sauce and like a dipping sauce for breadsticks yeah olive garden style bitches (laughs) bless you bless you Momo again yeah so the bless you the target ravioli is on point, and they have another kind: the tomato basil mozzarella ravioli. Have that you we're had that try yet? Next time. Oh, so that's a new one. Yeah, because it's like seven dollars for like a box of it, but it was worth every penny. And I think next time, instead of boiling it, I'm gonna pan sear it like pierogi. Yeah, I want that. And like butter, I'm gonna pan sear it in bar- butter and garlic salt. Yeah, because this ravioli didn't have that weird, uh, like really thick pasta right. it was like that nice thin kind of eggy sort it was, of it tasted like pasta. homemade ravioli it was so good it was really fucking good i'm super pleased with it and uh our cheese spirit tray uh, was delicious we also got a bottle of uh sharp cheddar easy cheese which i don't know why we've been buying that so much but we have it's just good Marca. yeah Marca. I, had a bad, I didn't actually was food. not look I, I i had some today but i was not really stoked that that was in the house because the last time we had the easy cheese the can was defective and it the, it like tasted oh it turned you off from it it, it tasted like it made burning. me sick it tasted oh, like it burning yeah. oh yeah well, i didn't know that i didn't have any of that yeah no no that's well i told her when we bought it to we ex- examined the can yeah we looked at it the reason that yeah. happened was like we took took the cap off and like the seal was compromised and I didn't mm. notice it until after I'd had a few crackers and I was and like, was yucky. why is this not like, cause it was acting like it was empty, mm-hmm. you know? And it, I thought it kind of had like a weird consistency and I'm like, oh, they f- friggin' changed it again. You know, like oh, they change yeah, it yeah, all the yeah. time. They change yeah. that kind of <gasps> stuff. Spe- yeah. Yeah. Speaking of things being changed, can we please yeah. bitch about Butterfingers? Let's talk about it's it. Time. It's time. It's time. Segway. What the fuck? What was the thing? You're not supposed to lay a finger on my butterfinger. Right. They touched they our it. butterfingers. They took them with their filthy hands and they changed them into something them. different. And they're not the same. Waxy chocolate. It's like a brick in the middle now. No flavor. It's yeah. like sugar. It just actually, tastes like a brick of sugar. More peanutty, I think, and less like candy crunch. It doesn't have those like flaky, layery, right. crumbly That's things what going I mean, on More anymore. peanutty. Yeah, it turned into like a. Um, it's just it's hard and it's chewy and like. I'm it, super bummed about it's awful. it. Why did they do that? Like if it's if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. Don't fiddle with it. Who was not buying your candy? Who For decided real? you needed to remake that? When did they take a poll that said they need to improve it? Right. Where was the where? where maybe was the, the maybe Butterfinger maybe that division of Nestle got sold off to a different company and they changed the recipe or something. I'm about to fill you guys in. So I've posted a couple days ago on the Facebooks. Why did Nestle decide to ruin the Butterfinger? It's a dark <laughs> day in candy. Here are some of the comments we had because some people actually weighed in. Somebody said, "What did they do to my favorite candy bar?" Uh, improved flavor my ass. I said that actually. That, I said that was the first thing that came out of my mouth. I said improved flavor my ass. And then yeah. someone said with a review like that, I'm sure the 39 nine cent sale is still paying too much. Um, let's see. I'm trying. Somebody actually said what happened. Oh, it wasn't Nestle. They sold Butterfinger to Ferrero Rocher. Ah, <gasps> bummer. I was right. Those then, chocolates are good. Why did they ruin the Butterfinger? What was wrong with it? There was nothing wrong with it. Did they have to change it for legal purposes? No. I mean, if you acquire a product and you require the recipe, you, you make it that You buy the formula. You buy the recipe, yeah? What happened? My dad weighs in. He said, what did they do to my Butterfingers, Nate? Well, it's because they're not using Nestle chocolate. They're using Ferrero Rocher. Is it Nestle Waxy. chocolate? It didn't taste the same. It's, it's not awful. the same. I want to buy another one and double double check and make sure they new just weren't yucky improve. bars someone else responded saying the new one tastes like shit yeah it's not just us no i hope they fix it go back to where you were before butterfinger 
Yeah. Super depressing. That was like my favorite fucking candy bar. I know. Now it just tastes like... It, it, like Butterfinger to me <sighs> did not have a... Pe- like it was peanut butter kind of. Right. But it wasn't... It was like peanut butter toffee mixed together and it's crumbly and good. Like... Br- yeah. Like this is like... All this weird, like, peanut butter hard candy thing. Like, it's kind of mm-hmm. like the Butterfinger that got left in Grandma's candy jar for a little too long. You know, for a few few Halloweens at the bottom. Right. And then oh you ate God. it. I'm aching for a regular Butterfinger like, now. Like, I'm feeling so sad. A crumbly one that doesn't hurt your teeth. Those things were like bullets, man. I can't believe how much I took Butterfingers for granted. That stuck to I my feel, teeth. I feel tricked. Well, you want to know something yeah. great? Mm-hmm. Van Til's. Right over there. Mm-hmm. Just right over there. Mm-hmm. 79 cents for well, that. Well, they did have them. Probably they not still, now. No, they still do. Ago. They still do. They had hundreds well, of them. Well, you're going to have to go get some tomorrow. Huge fuck. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they, they had a whole Obviously, huge fucking display. We, we didn't get any today. We were supposed to. And we forgot. Yeah, oops. oops. Well, that it was, was a madhouse. Yeah, it was insane at the, at the store today. So, uh, speaking of things that are new and tryable, we've tried some new food items that are worth discussing on the show as well, I think. Okay. Uh, there are two new kinds of Oreo cookie we're going to talk about and a new kind of Coca-Cola. Where would you guys like to begin? Well, I think that they both sucked. There was only one winner out of the three things that we tried. <laughs> <laughs> tough I, sell. Yeah, tough yeah, sell. yeah. I thought the, 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 what was it, Coke or Pepsi? Vanilla. It's orange vanilla Coke. Orange vanilla Coke. To me, it tasted like cough syrup like uh d- d- what's that dalsam or robitussin or something like the orange flavored cough syrup that's what it tasted like to me it came across as dreamsicle but i'm not a huge dreamsicle fan mm. i like the cherry sickles that's where it's at see and i thought it was the closest taste representation to a dreamsicle in pop form i've ever had yeah i could agree yeah, to that but i, I just didn't like it and i thought it had a i honestly thought it had a pretty smooth aftertaste that didn't really leave a, a bunch of junk in my mouth it did it did it was highly palatable like i could only have I, I could only have one and i was good i didn't need to have like two or three in a row but uh you shouldn't be having that many pops in a row anyway sorry whoa bust it out on the podcast mm. again nah yeah, Nate's, Nate's drinking pop again. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's around me too much, you guys. And when I don't have blah, water. Blah, anyways, whatever, blah. Whatever, whatever. So, uh, the orange vanilla Coke, I voted yes. You guys are in the middle. Sarah, what did you think about the orange vanilla Coke? I'm not in the middle. I disagree. Um, I liked it for like a once in a while treat. It was okay. Uh, I really wanted to have it with vanilla ice cream, and I never did that. I feel like that would be really good to have it like a float. Did and you might drink them t- all night? It might take away like some of that weird flavor, you know. Anyways. Not just me. I didn't just drink them all. Sarah had a couple too, right? You had a I couple. had literally two of them. Okay, yeah, so I had ten of them. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink And this pop. coming from a guy who's like... <laughs> I just, no, I drink I'm never going to drink pop again. Yeah. You want me to get back on that? Hey, man, it's your life. You decide. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. God damn it. Try to take responsibility. So. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, let's talk about, I don't know, do you guys want to be subject. happy or do you want to be upset? Because one Oreo is worth talking about and one is worth bitching about. Uh, we could talk uh, something good for once. I'm, I can take a break from bitching for a minute. So let's talk about this chocolate peanut butter pie Oreo cookie. Yeah, that was mm-hmm. solid. Graham yeah. cracker cookie. Mm-hmm. Have there been other graham cracker Oreos? Like, do they do s'more. a s'more one with them? It yeah. was not good. I didn't think I had it. That's because we never bought it because I bought them once and I threw them in the trash. Speaking of we this. We also threw the other ones in the trash oh, today. Oh, they were nasty. Yeah. We'll get to that in a minute. We, I we wanna, just threw them out. I want to mention, though, on the s'more thing, there are new s'more Oreos coming out with a double layer of marshmallow and a double layer of chocolate. Hot damn. So they're going to hopefully be a little bit they better. They don't have the overstuffed one or yeah, the most stuffed anymore, I do they? I miss them. I miss you, cookies. The most yeah, stuffed those were was good. so good. R.I.P. Those were good. Those were good. And so were the Fruity Pebble Oreos. Those were really good. Uh, R.I.P. into an alternate universe. Those yeah. Those my favorite. Never existed on our planet. They don't exist on the internet. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah, I know. It's weird. Mandela effect. <laughs> it was real. I had them. I, I experienced them twice, and they were fucking <laughs> delicious. Yeah, Fruity got, Crisp Oreos, man. Yeah, we man. got them from Walgreens, I'm telling you. The no, Walgreens it was from... 
Walgreens and Law. I swear dude. to God, it was from Target. <laughs> it was Walgreens and Law. It doesn't it matter. We'll never have them again. Any well, we bought them twice. I'm probably thinking of when I got them at Target. Maybe. Maybe we did get them there. I don't. I, we got them a couple times. So, what did right. you think of the chocolate peanut butter pie Oreo cookies, though? I thought they were good. I thought mm-hmm. the the creamy filling inside was nice and creamy and peanut buttery. Mm-hmm. I wasn't offended by it, and I wanted more of them, even though you ate all of them. So I only had two. Man, you guys made me out to be <laughs> a giant fucking You're just cow. Like the worst well, share ever. you make yourself <laughs> into the thing that you you do. You're the one eating it. You're the one eating you played them. Played yourself. <laughs> we're sharer anyway, man. <laughs> Did you like those peanut butter Oreo cookies? Uh, yeah, they were like. <laughs> How many did gram- you get of them? Did you get to have more I than had two? Like, like one handful, so like five of them. Okay, yeah. okay, that's better than it's a respectable two. amount. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't all at once either. It was kind of like piecemeal, you know. Yeah. Well, cookie, I made up for cookie. my lack of peanut butter pie cookies by getting uh, some. What are they? Chips Ahoy Candy Blast cookies on sale for two ninety nine today. That was yeah. pretty rad. Those are your jam. I think I made myself a little sick on them, though. I ate, like, a ton of them <laughs> with cookies and milk today. Oh, I made myself sick on my cookies. The other Ooh, day. talk about your cookies. Those were <laughs> stellar. Yeah, I'm old into school these, cookies. like, Dutch cookies now. <laughs> these, like, these, like, Vortman Bakery cookies or whatever. Yeah. I don't know what the deal they is. They make Why? those iced almondette cookies, too. Yeah, I love those. And I got them around the holidays, and I was like, oh, damn. Mm-hmm. I remember these. I love these cookies, right? Yeah. And then, like... I've had my eye on them because, like, I really like sh- those stupid sugar wafers, but I don't like the dollar ones because they leave that weird, like, coating in your mouth. Right. You know, that's they taste awful. artificial and, I, and yucky. Because that's what they are. Chemical. Yeah. But these uh, don't have, like, super weird ingredients in them, these cookies. They're, and, like, mostly natural, it seems. Yeah. They don't use artificial flavors. And yeah. Stuff, so they're, like, I don't the like perfect artificial wafer flavors. cookies, like, layered wafer oh, cookies. Oh, my God. I literally, I got the vanilla sugar wafers, like, you know, grandma's Ooh, sugar they were wafers. they so good. Oh. And they didn't hurt my teeth when I ate them. Like, it wasn't no, too sweet. No, they were the perfect. And they were crunchy and crisp. Yeah, because the wafer, they got it right. It's not. Uh, it's not sugary. The wafer right. shouldn't be sugary. Right. That's the problem with the dollar right. store ones. That's the ones. problem with those strawberry ones, though. Yeah. Like, they get so sugary, they hurt your teeth. Like, yeah, I want to try this brand filling. strawberry. Yeah. And they had, like, like six different types of these okay. wafers. Talk about the ones we got today, the new yeah. ones we tried. So, over the last two days, I literally ate an entire brick of those <laughs> sugar wafers. I, like, don't know. I was, like... Uh, it was almost to the stage of, like, I need a fistful of these cookies. I just wanted to, like, eat them like a giant brick, okay, of sugar wafers. I understand. They're pretty good. I have problems. So the ones we got today were chocolate raspberry wafers, and they were really good. They were unbelievable. Yeah. I they, bet they would be good, like, uh, crunched up as, like, a strawberry chocolate or a raspberry chocolate milkshake topper. Yeah, on next time on Foodies, we'll be talking about that. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I tried something new that was chocolate and raspberry. It was a Captain Crunch new chocolate crunch berry cereal. It's like all red berry crunch berry with little chocolate crunches in it, and it was so good. Yeah. I had like three bowls of it this morning. I actually bear, I bear witness to that. You yeah. really did. You were like... I'm smashed. I this. smashed that box of cereal today. Mm-hmm. It was so good. <laughs> I want to make them into cookies, though. Uh, yeah, you said that. Yeah. I didn't try it yet. Someday I will make. Uh, yeah, I need to make them soon. Like get another box of them just to dedicate for cookies. Because my grandma used to make this like awesome Captain Crunch cookie cereal. You were saying that earlier she would too. make them with Trick cereal too, but she'd always end up burning them. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, Grandma like, D, little grandma. Yeah, little grandma. Interesting. She makes all kinds of yummy cookies, but inevitably the cereal ones are always burnt. And they're always my favorite, so I eat them anyway. I uh, <laughs> I will say I like how we Tarantinoed the shit out of the final Oreos because they already know where the story ends and the fucking garbage. But what were these Oreos that we tried that were so awful that literally, let me just say this, three Oreo cookies were eaten from the entire package. There are three of us. I didn't even eat mine. I didn't you either. Took bite, I took one bite. Took one bite. One I, bite. It hurt my teeth really bad. I had to throw it away. I believe I shoveled it down. It hurt my they soul. Were yucky. Carrot cake Oreos. 
What the hell, guys? Not enough cream cheese flavor, too much sugar. They totally fucked it. It was mm-hmm. bad. It was so awful. It was and just artificial. like a sh- sweet sugar bomb. It hurts my teeth to think about. Like literally, I know. My, my teeth, teeth are aching hurting. right now thinking about those cookies. I'm glad we threw them away. We, our bodies do not want them. We were not re- ready for that. No. I know my body doesn't want them because they've been sitting in front of me all week and none <laughs> went anywhere. And yeah, I was, heard, I was looking at them. I was like, why the fuck are these still here? Throw these away. <laughs> Felt bad being wasteful, but I, they're yucky. They're bad. They weren't going to get some, eaten, and, and listen, I didn't want to do that to myself. Sometimes you're going to have bad Oreos. Sometimes. Sometimes. Like, I, I didn't really like the lemon Oreos, you know, when they did the lemon ones. I they still a, have those. I'm not a big fan. See, I don't remember them. I don't think we have My favorite them. Oreo I I is those. mint. Gross. <sighs> they taste, they're like chocolate toothpaste, man. Yeah. They taste like thin mints. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. Not a fan. Not a fan at all, huh? Yeah. She doesn't like chocolate mint. I know. But she did. Didn't you eat like an Andy's mint or something the other day? And you were like, oh, this is actually pretty fucking good. I did. Yeah. I was super surprised I liked it. Yeah. I had like two of them. Mm. Yeah. Progress. I also had a bunch of uh, Dove, like, chocolate from Valentine's Day. One of my little students gave me a giant bag of... Milk chocolate Dove candies with a caramel inside. And they were oh, amazing. Yeah. I ate, like, way too many of those. Mm-hmm. So much candy. Why are parents more intelligent and, like, keep your ha- the kids' Halloween candy to give out to other kids at Valentine's Day? Yeah. Because that's the gangster move. That's a good call. That's that, a good call. That, because, like, everything is Halloween-themed, and you want to have everything heart-themed. Fuck It's that. all about give capitalism. Me, don't I want know. skulls. I need skulls. <laughs> like, give me your skulls for Valentine's. That's what I would prefer. Well, there you go. So, um... <clears throat> That's why you're in a horror punk band, and they're not... It's true. That's why we are Ooh. a horror punk band. Uh, do you know what's funny? I also want to mention this, that this movie is now in theaters again. Poking the bear. This movie is now in theaters again, but a movie that just won an Oscar. You guys weren't so jazzed to see initially. By the time we finished watching the movie, you were the most impressed I think I've ever seen you in watching a movie of this nature. Um, and I think Sarah, you also walked away feeling pretty stoked about this film. So let's talk about Into the Spider Verse. Okay. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sure, go ahead. Okay, uh, just give me something here. Damn, yeah, you're just fine. like stonewall me there. Uh, this movie was one of those things. Like I saw the trailer and I was like, "Oh fuck, an animated Spider-Man movie." Okay. Give yeah, it to initially me. I wasn't thrilled about it. Like, well, not that I wasn't thrilled about it. It's just like I'm going through a, a hardcore case of superhero fatigue. You know, I've been wanting to watch other things that are not superhero related because I watch so much of that, which I typically enjoy and that's fine. I'm just, every once in a while I need a little change of pace. So I wanted to put off watching Spider-Man for a little while or whatever. And now it was finally our chance to watch it. And we did. And honestly, I loved it. I thought it was mm-hmm. awesome. It was excellent. Yeah. I uh, covered this last week on journey into comics. Obviously this movie won best animated for the Oscar being the first movie to kick out Disney in 10 years at the Oscars. It was a beautiful movie. Like it looked beautiful. The style, the concept, the art, all of it was really cool. I loved it. It used great fluidity that made you feel like you were watching a motion comic book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was. Yeah, it was super cool how they animated it. It was different. It wasn't what I expected at all. Mm-hmm. And uh, it kept me interested for something that's animated, you know. And what's really cool is, like, you guys were super into the story for the story and what that offers, which is great. Mm-hmm. As a OG Spidey, Parker, Miles Morales type fan, every inch of that movie was laden with Easter eggs and mm-hmm. moments that just left me going, oh, my God, like, I can't believe I'm seeing this in this one specific form like i never thought i'd ever see a prowler of any kind in any movie and that character coming to life was crazy but the story was really beautifully done uh there was this movie is also like i said back in theaters on the big screen so uh and then uh the dudes who uh chris miller and phil lord they wrote and directed this Mm -hmm. uh they were catching some hell from people 
because they didn't thank Stan Lee and Steve Ditko for making Spider-Man, which gave them an Oscar. But it's because the Oscars cut their acceptance speech short. Oh. So they shared a picture of their acceptance speech and like it had it all there. It was all, you know, proof in the pudding. They just cut it for timing. Yeah, because, you know, of Rude. course the Oscars and we're going to talk about that in a minute too, but uh, it's all just publicity stuff. Do you mm. think that this movie, I mean, we I kind of been teasing it all coming into the award season that this movie Into the Spider-Verse looked like it could be the perennial contender to take all the animated for every different Golden Globe and all that thing and it did. Yeah. It really did and I think it was very well deserved well i didn't see it until after you know all of these awards except for the oscars because we saw it the day before the oscars dropped right but my point was i didn't see it to have an informed opinion you know on whether or not i thought it was going to win because it had some pretty stiff competition from like typical movies that you think would win like the incredibles too or the isle of dogs because it's so artsy or whatever the hell else was nominated but after seeing it, I could totally see why it was the clear winner in all of those nominations. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's, just... it's definitely worth seeing, even if you're not like a, a superhero fan. And I think you said it best when, as soon as we were done watching it, you looked at me and you were like, I forgot we were watching a superhero movie. Mm-hmm. Like, I was just in this movie. The story was lost. so good. It was so good. It was fast-paced. And it just... It, Got you sucked in. I think the twist also, I'm not going to spoil the twist, obviously, but Mm -hmm. the twist, you experiencing that, me, obviously, Spider-Man fan, I have a little bit more of the insight, so me knowing what was coming and you not, and then, like, you were just like, I I really wasn't expecting that. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know what to think right now, and I was like, yeah, I'm usually pretty good at that game where, like, I can, you know, predict where I think the movie's going and whatnot, but I had no idea i was genuinely surprised which i enjoyed feeling yet again another thing that i think made this movie really solid for people yeah that was a solid solid movie i liked it totally so on the opposite end of the spectrum another oscar winner we watched it today i was hyped on this movie because i thought like after my first initial watch through which was to hopefully determine that you guys would be okay watching it and it wouldn't be something that would upset you i watched it and i was like man they're gonna love this movie it was great like it gave me a lot of positive feelings moving forward and how change can happen and whatnot and then you guys watched it and we're gonna talk about it right now but uh we watched black klansman spike uh spike lee won his first oscar Mm -hmm. for this movie and uh based on ron stallworth's real story Mm-hmm. In the 1970s in Colorado Springs, being a detective who infiltrates the KKK. Yeah, it's a super uh, intriguing, interesting story. It mm-hmm. could, yeah, this movie had a really interesting plot, and it was so like fast paced, like it, like it just it got right into it, you know. But also, I think uh, <clears throat> it had a really cool cast. Yeah, it was a great, great cast. Like uh, just. All the characters they had. Adam Driver did a phenomenal job. And I want to mention briefly, I really do believe he should have won Best Supporting Actor for his role in that movie. Because, man. Yeah, it, I, I mean, it was kind of like Adam Driver being Adam Driver at times. But I could tell like when he was actually acting. Mm-hmm. And he was excellent in this movie. Yeah, given it is all good. really pushing the pace in this film. Mm -hmm. Uh, it tackles, you know, a really hard topic. Like we can't avoid it, but racism in the seventies was still actively happening, even though the civil rights movement had already happened. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is again, based on full real, full real shit, as it said in the beginning, which I love. Yeah. I will say about Uh, this movie, you could definitely tell you were watching a Spike Lee movie. I thought you were going to say joint Spike Lee joint. Cause that was the old school thing. Oh, well, this is the Spike Lee joint. Uh, (laughs) You know, I don't know. I feel like this movie just, you guys said it. Maybe you want to talk about it here a little bit or not. But it did have moments that in my second watch through felt a little preachy. Like it was a little like, okay, like I know this scene doesn't need to drag on this long. That we could have chopped like five minutes from the cutting room floor. Like Example, there's the guy that's giving the speech in the movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's like hyping the crowd. 
that scene could have been four and a half minutes shorter, and I would have been cool with it. It and was, I, seemed really long. It really it was. was. Really it was like ten and movie. a half minutes in the scene, and that's the movie a was long, long scene for a yeah. movie, you know. And uh, it had a lot of plot, though. It, it had a lot to cover, it, right? It, and it had a lot of things that it was trying to say. And, yeah. And it definitely had to build the tension for the for the reality that they were trying to tell in that story, which mm-hmm. was immense. I mean, I think it does a great job of also being a really almost a thriller based story because there are moments where you're on the edge of your seat like oh my god what's going to happen to these people and then whichever way the wind blows and however things fall Mm -hmm. which i'm not going to (gasps) spoil ultimately just you know it led to an interesting movie i think it's well deserved that spike lee won but uh yeah that's all i have to say about that i guess yeah i think it was a deserved win what was it for Screenplay or... I think it was for Best Original Screenplay. Let's actually, before we leave this one section real quick, I have a full list of Oscar winners. I'm just going to list the category, the winner, the category, the winner. We'll go down it real fast. That way you can keep you guys alive and moving and grooving so we can get through this. Best Picture went to Green Book right out the gate. We're just giving it to you here. Actor in a leading role went to Rami Malek, Bohemian Rhapsody. If you have any thoughts, still on haven't these, seen that movie. Yeah, we're I want to see it. It's on the list. It's the it's next on one. The list. It's the next one we're going to be talking about. I promise. We're going to watch it soon. Actress in a leading role went to Olivia Coleman, the favorite. I loved her reaction to winning. Yeah, her ex- acceptance speech was very nice. She's like, "None of you know who I am. This is great. Like, mm-hmm. I'm having such a fun time." Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think they spoofed that on SNL too, that no one knows who Olivia Coleman is. I do. I loved her in Broadchurch. I want to see uh, that movie, The Favorite. I really wanted to we, see we that. We can watch that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, actor in a supporting role. As I said, I thought this should have went to Adam Driver. It went to Mahershala Ali in Green Book. I haven't seen that. Mahershala Ali. That's a hard one to say. Actress in a supporting role went to Regina King if Beale Street could talk. Animated feature film. We've already covered this. Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Cinematography went to Roma. It's all black and white and animated. Or all black and white and uh, what do you call it? Uh... Subtitles. Mm -hmm. Subtitled. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word. Uh, Costume design went to Black Panther, which which pulled down three Oscars, by the way. Marvel has officially won an Oscar. You know, they're only a Tony Award from EGOTing. Oh, yeah? The the MCU, yeah. (laughs) A Tony Award, eh? I hate Uh, to see Marvel Broadway show. There was one. Spider-Man, Turn Off the Lights, or Turn Off the Lights, or something. That got terrible reviews and got shut down and closed early. Yep. Like, kept get, having injuries, and... Yep. Yeah, that was like a cursed fucking Broadway show. I Dur- remember f- reading about that when it was happening. Yeah. That was several years ago. Best Director went to Alfonso Curran uh, with Roma. Documentary Feature went to Free Solo. Documentary Short Subject went to Period, End of Sentence. Film Editing went to Bohemian Rhapsody. Foreign Language Film went to Roma. Makeup and Hairstyling went to Vice. Music original score went to Black Panther. Music original song went to Shallow, A Star is Born, which they performed, of course, at the Oscars. I haven't seen that movie yet. Lady Everybody Gaga. said it was good. Production design went to Black Panther. That was its third in the uh, winning of... Short film went to Bayo, that depressing thing about a dumpling. Yeah, we didn't like that, yeah. did no, we? No, it was super... What was that in front of? I Love Dogs, right? Yeah. I think, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh. Yep. It was just a bum- or it was double whammy. A- no, maybe it was in front of uh, in- Incredibles two. <laughs> I don't know. No. I think it was Isle of Dogs. No, it was Isle of Dogs. It was a while ago. We were like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah. Short film, live action, skin, sound editing went to Bohemian Rhapsody. Sound mixing went to Bohemian Rhapsody. Visual effects went to First Man. Writing adapted screenplay. This is what Spike Lee won for. Black Klansman. Writing original screenplay. Green Book. Best adapted screenplay. Yep. So this mm. was the book adaptation? Yep. Uh, Ron's book? Correct. Sweet. I want to read that book. Me too. Like, I'm super interested in the story. And I think I said this too. I would love to hear this, as, or I would love to see this as like an actual documentary style movie mm-hmm. over a docudrama style like retelling. It would, yeah. it would be a great subject for a documentary. Just like, like him just, sitting there talking about it. Mm-hmm. Just oh. like yeah. that triplets documentary we were watching. Just him narrating the whole thing, the yeah. whole story, man. That triplets one Fuck stuck it. with me. I'll make that documentary about Ron Stallworth. I don't give a shit. 
I got a GoPro. Let's do it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just riffing. Sorry. Is that all the Oscars? That was all the Oscars. That's Great. that's all that we did. All that we did it. We got through them very fast. I'm going to take a second here in a second because you guys have a movie you both watched. I have no idea what you're about to say, what you're going to talk about, what you're going to get into. Mm. Uh, so yeah, you want to talk about what you guys watched the other night while I was doing a journey into comics? Well, how much of this movie do you want us to talk about? Because are of you it. planning on seeing it? Not at all. You have no interest in seeing this nope. movie. Oh. You are You're missing out, man. Guys, we watched a fucking stellar movie. Yeah, but you guys literally said, I don't think you're going to like it. I didn't say I that. I said, don't I don't know if you're going to like you it. You don't know if I'm going to like I it. I don't know if you would like it. Here's the deal. This is one of those examples where I feel like spoilers are okay because it's going to sell me on whether or not I want to see this movie. Okay, so, do you want to do spoilers in this review or do we want people to watch it? It's been out for about two months, by the way. We can just do like a Listen, concept. Listen, it's a horror movie, so I don't want to say who dies. Right. That's t- this stupid. is a horror movie. Yeah. Oh, I, I was browsing. Like, yeah. I was browsing Netflix. And I saw Jake Gyllenhaal's, like, smug hipster yeah. face staring at me. And mm. I was like, what is he starring in now? So I let the little trailer autoplay. And I was like, oh, I got to watch this with yeah, Sarah. We were just like, mm. <laughs> so then we wa- I played it, for, and we were, played it for her. And we were just like, okay, we have to watch this immediately. This yeah. movie's for us, clearly. It was called Velvet Buzzsaw on yeah. Netflix. Yeah. And it was surprising how much I liked it. I, yeah, me too. It was so <laughs> pleasing. It was so fucking funny and witty and clever and making fun of like the L.A. art world. Yeah, totally vapid. It was so like, vapid. Oh, man. Oh, my God. It was so good. I, I kind of want you to watch the, it. The Nate. dialogue was just like incisive. It was yeah. perfect. It, it was, was the art so critiques. Funny. Oh. It was like a perfect 80s movie. That was yeah, made in it was present campy. day. It was campy. It was campy yeah. and fun. Yeah. Like the, the I wasn't deaths expecting are like it. super campy, but like, I mean, one spoiler that we can say, I think, and I'm not going to say how, but like the whole idea, the whole idea is like these paintings are coming to life. Like yeah, these paintings are yeah. pos- p- possessed or, or possessed something. by a spirit yeah. of the, the painter. Like the story of this movie is this woman, uh, her neighbor dies and she finds his body mm-hmm. and realizes that he's an artist and that they're going to throw away all of these paintings yeah, at his request. He ordered them to be burned. He want, yeah. yeah. He asked for them to be destroyed upon his death. So what? I remember watching this trailer and I'm super interested. Please continue. Okay. Oh, please continue. Okay. Well, anyway, you just jogged my memory with the painter pictures the dead guy. He just yeah. can't take our word for something that would be good. He's like, right. Anyway, what? I want- <laughs> I'm just teasing. It's okay. Anyway, so where was I? You a painter? Oh yeah, she she takes all the paintings, and then her boss blackmails her into uh, letting her sell them and mm-hmm. make her rich at the same time. And then things go awry yeah, and things start happening. Start to go crazy. Yeah, yeah it gets yeah. like it's madness driven. <laughs> like it's totally unexpected. And then there's this weird relationship with the, like the the woman who is selling the paintings. Like is also having a relationship with this gay man. And yeah, like it's, it's just the all the deaths. It's the are best like, story. Oh, they're all ironic. Like <laughs> yeah, everything. they're all so oh. ironic and like w- self aware at the same time. Yeah, like it's very meta. Like it has oh. like a very like like a uh, freddy vibe to it it has this yeah. campy like very 80s 80s i was like, digging it I slasher digging sort it. of like oh and it's but, like almost like american psycho too right it's like american the, psycho meets freddy in the art world yeah. Ooh. and it's the best characters because you don't get atta- attached to any of them right. they could all go at any moment and as the viewer you're just like okay <laughs> right like, like this okay. is a, this is an That's excellent fine. movie it that, was so yeah. funny and like dry witty but has a, a very more vibe to it's it a, it's like a niche market i don't know yeah it, it didn't got, get great reviews but you know what, what you said it didn't i get also good reviews. like video games that get horrible reviews so i guess i have bad taste we have bad taste guys i think maybe the people that are reviewing it just aren't getting it for what it is maybe maybe but if you go out networking anywhere on certain levels of networking you'll understand this mm-hmm. film because oh my god yeah oh. it was super real the things you super have to funny. do the people you have to talk to the conversations you have to have with people right uh it's like a protocol yeah 
Man, it was interesting. It was a really interesting movie. I it it watch has it again. so many different things going on in it, mm-hmm. and it was really fast paced. Like it was really fast paced. So many things. It's wild in this movie. I would watch that movie again just to see what you thought of Jake it. Jake Gyllenhaal's we, character is smug little character. He's was just, just perfect. This is his mm. best character I've ever seen him play. Yeah, and he's played some great characters. Yeah, like Donnie Darko and yeah. Brokeback Mountain. And he did all that weird Disney thing, like the mm. Prince of Persia <laughs> thing. It was like oh, that's yeah. where he lost me. I'm like, where are you oh, going yeah. with this, dude? Yeah. Then he did the uh, Nightcrawler thing, and that was creepy. Yeah. And but now he's doing this with his life, and I couldn't be more pleased. Velvet Bloodsaw. Or what is it called? Buzzsaw. Buzzsaw. Velvet Buzzsaw. Yeah, yeah. Bloodsaw. I like that, though. I like that better. It sounds like a metal Bloodsaw. band. Blood Bloodsaw. Blood 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 metal band. I love it. Rock. It's, uh... That, yeah, I saw the trailer for that. I remember <laughs> seeing the trailer for that, and I was like, man, I don't know. I, it, it, it was a big question mark, because I don't... Like you guys said, I don't really dig the horror so much. There were things about but. it that I didn't like. Like the vapidness was getting a little annoying with yeah. Renee Russo's character. Yeah. She was had to just like out the gate, like say, like establish that she used to be a punk rock queen. And now she's like this elitist art management lady. And like it just was she they were trying to shove so much character into the movie because there was so much plot. How like it was this? just yeah. so much. Yeah. I don't know. Less than two hours, you think? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like a standard horror movie length. Yeah. It was really good. It was so different. I have yeah. was blown away. I loved it. I yeah, so I, pleased. Yeah, and I felt like it was kind of like, a, I don't know. Like, there's things about it that could have been better, but mm-hmm. at the same time, it almost felt like a band's first effort, you know? Yeah, like, you like know that was an experimental I know indie going movie. For. It was a like, Sundance movie, that's yeah. why. Oh, I know what you're well going for, Sundance, guy. Oh, it did well at Sundance, right? Like we were saying, like, who wrote this movie? Who are you? The whole you? time we were like, who wrote this? Who, who are it? you? I want to be your friend. I know. Where are you? Let's meet. <laughs> Let's yeah. talk. funny. Sarah was talking about how she didn't get attached to any of the characters and that anyone at any time could go and you just be like, okay. Made me think of Pete Davidson's character that he yeah. played. Okay. In, okay. Uh, okay. Cool. Okay. okay, cool. Lit. Sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, SNL's been on fire. They've Man. been pretty, pretty good. They have a a gold star cast right now yeah we're in like a golden age of snl right now we were yep. talking about that earlier does that come from the political climate too like they're they have such good content to even work with and it's so ridiculous like they don't even have to like work hard writing mm-hmm. these jokes i'm sure like because this shit just writes itself Most of the yeah. jokes are there. all their cold opens just write themselves yeah with Liter- the political stuff yeah they literally only add like maybe two lines of dialogue to real shit that actually <laughs> happens you know like i watch That's a, a problem, lot of this stuff it america is. Is that's a, a problem. fucking problem guys this is a problem i don't know is there anything else we had to talk about yeah we have some movies that are coming soon that we're looking forward to of course one movie by the time the next foodies drops we will have seen by the time this movie the, by the time this Captain episode marvel right yeah when are we going to see that next this coming when does friday it come this coming friday friday march 8th 8th friday captain marvel march 8th yes ma'am all right tyler and skyler coming up sweet to be a part of that and they're gonna do a jic with us and talk about captain marvel that'll be dope yeah hopefully none of us are scroll <laughs> what if i was a scroll right now and my face just shifted and i was an alien and you'd be like what the fuck where did the real nate go i don't know do not very know few it? things surprise me at this point really <laughs> wow that i would become a scroll wouldn't surprise you surprises me <laughs> like, i'm terrified now what I'm if i really I am still one? surprise you oh shit yeah you, you can totally still surprise me you do a great job of surprising me i'm really looking forward to captain marvel i think i've hyped it a shit ton on yeah we've talked a lot about that movie we don't need to talk about it anymore on- i'm excited to see it whatever uh, <laughs> you know, I was at Target and I saw the they had some Captain Marvel pops. They had a, a Samuel L. Jackson one, the Nick Fury, and uh, the, they didn't have one that had a sticker that said Target exclusive. They didn't have they? any exclusives, and the boxes were both damaged in the corners and looked shitty, so I didn't get them. And they were the last two. There is a Target exclusive Captain Marvel pop that's her flying that glows in the dark that I fucking one that was not the one they had at target all the fucking poachers took it already yeah, like they were I, you're not gonna wiped find out. it yeah they were like, people clean. are assholes i hate that the whole market i'm done with pops i digress great i'm so glad let's move on to music because you guys were talking about bohemian rhapsody we haven't seen it yet but also 
uh, this movie's trailer dropped, and I was like, that's n- this year's fucking Bohemian Rhapsody, which is Taron Eggert's Rocket Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We watched the trailer for that. Um, at first, I was like, huh, okay, what? And then I got right. into it, and I was like, okay, great. I'm on board. <laughs> yeah. Here I am, ready to watch this Elton John movie. That yeah. one looks like it could be fun. Yeah, I hope so. It, it seemed, okay, one thing I do want to mention, I did a little bit of reading, and Elton John had, like, a very close hand in every part of this movie. Interesting. Making sure it so was we're going to get his, so uh, uh, his version of things, his curated version of his bubble, if drama. you will. And, you I can't know, wait. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait for the costumes alone. Yeah. I'm stoked. Platforms for life. One thing I really loved about the trailer was uh, he says, he, Reg, he, I can't remember, his first name was Reginald, but um, he was like, people don't pay money to see Reginald Watts. They pay money to see Elton John. You know, and he had like his like chicken costume on when he's saying that. He's all mm-hmm. like, yeah. I don't know, I just really like that moment. It was beyond drama. I just thought it was like a... Man, now I want to watch The Birdcage. Mm. Oh, mm. My favorite night night movie. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah, but we've watched it like a million and fifty times. Uh yeah. Yeah, that's the point. Because <laughs> yeah. I like it. <laughs> Fair. Fair point. Yeah. Another movie that we were looking forward to is Us, the Jordan Peele get out sequel. Weird, creepy horror, you know, really the trailers have been elusive to what the story is, we don't know. Right. You're not gonna know. But this is one of those movies that uh, it's probably going to pull down some Oscars for sure. I don't doubt it. Get Out. It was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. Cool. I thought the there was another trailer we were going to talk about. The Pet Cemetery trailer came out, and I feel like uh, I have more to say about that. Yeah, please do. I forgot to write that one down. I'm sorry. I meant oh, to write that down. That's okay. I, I was looking at well, the list like, oh, shit, yeah. I... Uh, I don't know. I do have something to say about that. Sarah, you're aware of the the changes that are have been made in the upcoming Pet Cemetery movie, right? I uh I have I think I read a couple things, but I would not be able to tell you. Okay. Well, you haven't seen the trailer for it yet. No, I didn't watch it. Yeah. I watched the trailer for it and uh it gave away immediately that it's different than the original Stephen King movie in the book. Okay. Um, in in this new iteration of it, it's like the eight year old daughter who is killed in in the movie and then comes back. Okay, and not the the yeah. little two year old, three year old boy. Ooh. Gage. Yeah. There's Ooh. still a little baby in the movie, but he's not the one that gets killed. It's the daughter, and they changed that, or so I read, because. They thought that it would be more unsettling because that size of a person can do more damage than a little two-year-old. Like, an eight-year-old, you know, is probably no. like a few inches shorter than do me. Do you want to know what? I don't think that that is good logic, and I will tell you why. And they also said it was ethical reasons as well. Well, ethical, yes, you can't make these movies these days, but... Right. Horror movies are a little bit, eh, you kind of toe the line. Mm-hmm. You know, you toe the line. And this mo- the original one definitely toed the line. Oh, man. Well, the original one traumatized me when I was a kid. So it I traumatized was, me, it too. It really did. I, it really did. I, it was a it fucked up movie me. to watch as a child. Yeah, I watched it in third grade. At, I had a sleepover, and we all watched it. It and, was so scary. Um, Everything about it yeah, was just gross. It was... The old lady living upstairs, ooh. dying... The, the little baby, yeah. like the funeral scene the with Achilles the casket. tendon. Oh, oh they had to kill the, Herman Monster. Like, yeah. it was the fucking worst. Yeah, the dude. Th- then there's a dude at the beginning. I remember, I, I don't remember what his name is, but he, like, comes back. He's, like, the ghosty kind of guy. I think he's, like, Paxton yeah. or something. He, like, tells it's the whole It's been a long time since I've seen the original guy. one. Dude, it is, like, burned in my memory. It seriously, yeah. it, like, traumatized me. For real. But I, uh... It's a gross one. It, it traumatized Stephen King when he wrote it. He said that he went yeah. through a crippling depression while he was writing this movie because I, it was so sad to him it, being involved in th- this kind of story. Right. It made him really depressed. I, I imagine. Well, and I have to get back to saying the thing about the two, three-year-old kid. I'm telling you, a kid like that is scarier than an older kid to me because an older kid you can rationalize with even if they're undead. Like... 
Well, they might be able to plot like young they're evil. They're the, possessed. The, evil the storyline of this movie is that the bodies don't come back as zombies. They come back possessed by evil spirits intent on fucking shit up and killing people. So it's not even their personalities that come back. It's just different spirits embody like in possessing like a the body. Thing, man. You know, yeah. like the little ones. Yeah. Like you don't see them coming. Like that's what was so unsettling about the original. The original one, that little it was like kid. The fact was, that they even went there was unsettling about it. Right, and little kids like that are scary to me, anyways, because they're unpredictable. <laughs> right, they're totally terrifying to me. Like you don't know <laughs> what they're gonna say. You don't know what they're mm-hmm. gonna do. You don't know if one minute they're gonna like just stab you because they think it's funny. You know. Like yeah, that's, I remember seeing like you with Oliver horrifying. when he was little, and you were terrified of him because he would like, like occasionally headbutt you. <laughs> He'd like try to headbutt everybody, and you'd be like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> you know, don't like it. Look, <laughs> give them to me. Four or five. Yeah. Four is like my threshold. Thank God, Ollie's five. <laughs> yeah, we're, I told he's you. Becoming more of a person and less of a. I told you. Just wait until he's four, and you can mm-hmm. start having conversations and things. Mm-hmm. Anyways, kids like that age are like just they're they're unpredictable, unpredictable, and they're terrifying. So yeah, that, that just that movie, that movie's something else. That was that's a different kind of horror movie. I don't think that's, that I really want to see the new one. That's I've how I felt about I've never seen the it old one. As You've well. never seen the old Fuck one. Fuck that! I'm not watching horror movies from Stephen King. They terrify me. <laughs> Because it's uh, going to be night terror. Well, yeah, but a lot of them don't age well. They're still really fun. Like, I love watching old Stephen King movies. Yeah, some of, you know, like, like the I love watching stuff. But you guys I don't know why I liked Cujo, like, but I did. Rose Red. You need to watch that shit. That's I, a fucking horror that movie. One. That movie will fuck you up. Four-hour yeah. adventure about a haunted-ass house. Mm-hmm. What? Pet Cemetery was just sad, though. Like, it was that, unnecessary. It I don't know if that story necessarily needed to be told. It makes me feel like this weird kid fear, like that yeah. old school. That's kid how I fear, feel about man. Children of the Corn too. Like that oh, movie, like damaged me, me when I was little because yeah. I live in a town surrounded by fucking cornfields in the yeah. middle of middle America. I live in the corn, yeah. you know. So that movie was really scary for me too. Yeah, but as an adult, it isn't. I've you, gone back and I just feel gross watching it now. Mm. You afraid somebody's gonna come out of the corn? Mm, ba, ba, um, da, ba, yeah. Oh God! Wow, <laughs> wow! Sorry, I'm gonna drop that in there. Not that <laughs> this is the Midwest, after all. Had to bring it. It you is know? the Midwest. It's a great yeah. Midwest joke. That's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if I. Could I don't know watch, if I want to watch it. You know that original one? I don't know. I really don't know if I'd want to watch it again. I just feel like we would feel sad and like we need to like like, like just but on take the other ten nap showers. after that like yeah. take a shower and nap. Go to bed for a while. And be or like, on Ugh. the flip side, you might watch it and it be like that whole like it looks like you know Leprechaun two or maybe something, it didn't age know? well, like, right? Like maybe, it, but maybe it just a like Shore. the story of it and like from what I remember of it, like I just I don't know. I feel like that one, even if it was st- like had some cheese factor to it, just like what's going on psychologically in that movie is just like I don't. I don't know. I don't know. That's a question mark I don't think I'm going to answer. I'm gonna so let Pet Cemetery, off. let the rest of the world judge it. You guys will never probably I'll see that I'll read one. the reviews. Yeah. And just go, oh, good to know. I'll listen to the good Ramon to... song. There you <laughs> <go>. Yeah. <laughs> That'll close be enough. close enough for me. Yeah. Uh, speaking of pets, how about Detective Pikachu? I'm looking forward to this movie, you guys. I'm a big fucking Pokemark. Uh, yeah, I, I think just you're about the only that one that's right looking now. forward to this movie Shut in this room. Oh, in this Dude, room. Do you okay. know what it looked like to me? It had vibes of that Mario Brothers movie from the 90s. No. Yeah. Yeah. It had, I like, I can't, and you, I'm surprised you being as big of a Deadpool fan as you are, are down with Ryan Reynolds having this voice. As because Pikachu. Because it doesn't gel. Like, it doesn't connect to me. I don't. I hear his voice now, and he's Deadpool. Right. He did that to himself. I mean. Okay. He's Deadpool now. Mm-hmm. You don't get to be Pikachu and Deadpool. That doesn't work out very well. Mm-mm. It's just two diametrically opposing characters for two totally different markets. No, and maybe I he's agree trying not you. to pigeonhole and himself, his, but, well, he, but he already voice, did. Sorry, dude. You got one of those voices. I mean, if you're gonna be 
that guy. Like, if you're going to take your Ryan Reynolds, I am Ryan. Like, that's like saying, like, you know, Seth Rogen. If he was just, I am Seth Rogen, and he does a <laughs> Seth Rogen <laughs> thing, and he becomes this really iconic character, well, guess what? Now you're that character. Now that's you. That's what you get to do now, you know? Mm-hmm. That's it's how it happens. You Here, know? Here's, let me blow your mind a little bit. There was no thought process in Ryan Reynolds thinking like that when he took this role because let me tell you, his thought process was, well, there's a market of adults that have seen Deadpool, that have heard Deadpool, that know Deadpool, but not children necessarily, or at least he's they should He's trying shouldn't. to appeal to a younger demographic. Obviously, you can get away with doing Why, it because... he's having kids now? Well, yeah, and, and whatnot, you well, know? here's the thing, though. There, the issue, and I, and I think you're going to be on the same page as me, and I was going to say this, the issue is that you have crossover fans who are of my age, who loved Pokemon as a kid, would love to have seen that shit in live action, or going, ah, I want to see this in live action. But Pika Pool is kind of throwing me off. Right? You too? A little bit. I mean, I like it. I can. I. Th- I think I'll be able to separate it. At least I'm hoping I can separate it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just like Ryan Reynolds is always just Ryan Reynolds. He's that guy right. from Waiting. He's right. dead. That yeah, guy from Van Deadpool. Wilder. He's that guy from Van Wilder. He's just that guy, man. Yeah, and he can be in a live action role for in a, in a movie for children. Right. Why does it have to be a voice acting thing? My point Something is that his so voice is going to be associated with yeah. him. Yeah, no, I, I I totally understand taking on the role of two iconic characters in the modern day is difficult. Mm-hmm. Only John Goodman gets to do that. <laughs> I mean, well, he hasn't taken two major character roles. He takes what? all kinds of characters. But that's, he doesn't take iconic roles like Deadpool or Pikachu. I mean, John Goodman does like. Uh, I, you know so, what? You can, missed the joke. So. Sorry, I, I did. I did miss it. Can I? Guess I you missed the joke. Well, it's okay. all, all I was gonna say is like John Goodman. You bring him up, and it makes me think you guys have not seen Ten Cloverfield Lane. Yeah, we did. No. I did. I didn't watch that because it was one of those ones that was gonna make me uh, motion sick. Right? No, wasn't that one of those? No. Like, that was the first. This is the movie one? about the John Goodman who's living in a bunker and captures somebody. And like Girl. it convinces them that this end of the world that event the world is happening. End of the world maybe, maybe we did watch that. I, we watched it. We did watch it. I guess. Yeah. We talked about it. Yeah. We, we talked about it on Foodies. Like maybe I last. I think season. I remember that now. Shit, it's been. For I watched real. it. I'm looking forward to Detective Pikachu. I think we'll wait till it's a downloadable movie before we. Uh, uh, before you watch it, hmm. you and, can screen it if it's worth watching. I'll watch it. I have to be very particular with what I decide to spend my time watching because I have so little time to actually watch anything because I'm a very busy person and I don't want to spend my time watching shit that's going to make me regret wasting my time. I thought you were going to say hashtag Black Klansman. I was just like on the <laughs> cusp. I was just waiting no, for you to say No, I didn't think that it. was a wasted time okay, movie. Good. That as was just a long movie. It was just long, okay. And I was, I'm really yeah. tired. Yeah, I feel like there's one last thing we should discuss and it's worth getting your guys' opinions because I don't know when we're going to talk about this again. This is the very last thing. Mm-hmm. So uh, what are your guys' thoughts on uh, Rotten Tomatoes making it to where people can't review movies before they're out and like essentially combating trolls trying to affect movies, uh, reviews before they exist? Did you know about this? I didn't know about that. No, I don't. They're so- stifling opinions before the movies are released to stop people from influencing the movie well essentially what they did was they came out and they made a statement which we covered on jic that said to the effect of the want to see section of movies is being filled with people trolling and trying to give mean criticisms and trying to be hurtful to the market and for the re- the good readership of rotten tomatoes they want to ensure that everybody gets a fair shake so now the want to see section is removed and people will not be able to comment and talk about movies until they are actually out in theaters, except for actual critics who have seen the movie. Well, there's other places that people can bitch about movies mm-hmm. other than Rotten Tomatoes, so I think that that's fine. Whatever. Yeah, for real. Yeah, but Haters it- going to hate, so whatever. I'm glad that they have one less place to hate. <laughs> yeah, I just think it's good that Rotten Tomatoes stepped up in the age of trolling. Mm-hmm. And said, like, we're going to take a stand and do something about this, you know. Yeah, because it really can affect livelihoods and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, how much box offices make. You totally. know, can af- they need can their millions. It. Yeah, because I'm sure it's people aren't feed. going to the movie theaters because they're so fucking expensive. So word of mouth and, like, po- social media advertising is really 
all people have anymore. Mm-hmm. And people are going to jump on Rotten Tomatoes. They're going to see a score. The movie hasn't come out. They're like, oh, audience score, 22%. The right, they're going to be dissuaded from, it makes perfect sense from a fin- from a business standpoint. Yeah, for what that website is for. For what it's for, what it makes it sense. Does, yeah. yeah, whatever. The rest of them can go on moviepoopshoot.com. <laughs> moviepoopshoot.com. Great, great Jay and Silent Bob reference <laughs> before we get on here. Yeah. Speaking Hashtag of. Hashtag Magnolia fan. Jay and Silent Bob <laughs> reboot is like 15 days into shooting right now. Hell yeah. So that'll be out by early next year. I can't wait. Yeah. It better be everything I want it to be. It it's will be. be. I know. Heck yeah. I'm, I'm so not excited. Worried. Well, I think that's going to do it for Foodies Girls. Before we go, you guys, uh, as always, you know, you can check out the Foodies Watching Movies podcast on the Journey into Comics Network. Right here at journeyintocomics.com or on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music, Spotify, CastBox, anywhere you're getting podcasts. Just search for the Journey Into Comics Network. You'll get all the shows on our network. For free. For free. And then you can go to uh, the Patreon at patreon.com backslash journeyintocomics and give us a dollar for early access or exclusive content. More money you give us, the better, the more cool stuff we can come up with. Not free. Not free. But you get early access, which means as soon as this episode is done being edited, you get to hear it days before anybody else on the main feed. And exclusive content. And exclusive content. We've got some cool stuff coming up, I promise. And uh, we've got some big plans for April as well. Looking forward to that. But I think that's going to do it for Foodies Watch Movies Season 3, Episode 12. I've been Nate, Veronica, Sarah, and we will see you guys next time. As always, eat fearless. Later. Hey guys, Deadpool here. Just wanted to tell you about a little event that's happening on March 23rd. Fun for Funs, it's a Journey into Comics Network event. Featuring live podcasts from Brews with Dudes, Podcastrophy, Dungeons with Dudes, and Journey into Comics, as well as performances by band number one. Boner Jovi. Ooh, that sounds fun. Walk Among Us. Yesterday's Chips. Also featuring live stand-up by comedian Patrick Murray. He's so much fun. Presented by Journey into Comics Network and the Doom Room. North and Pub, Lafayette, Indiana. Doors for three. Podcasts at four with bands at 730. $10. It's 21 and up. Don't try to sneak in, you silly kids. <laughs>